Hi folks, welcome back to the Storm and Cellar. Today we'll take a look at the trailer from the Netflix All Quiet on the Western Front, which actually means nothing new in the West or stagnation. The story is from the classic novel by Eric uh, Ramonk, a German veteran of World War I who published it in 1928 in a local paper and in 1929 with a publishing company. And it's about four starry-eyed German teens, Balmer, Krope, Westhouse, and Müller, who were plunged into battle and then having to face the realities of war. The book was later banned and burned by the Nazis. As General Tecumseh uh, Sherman once remarked, war is hell. And that aptly applies to the brutal trench warfare of World War I. I visited many of these battle sites in France and Belgium. While standing there looking across what was once vast muddy and charred fields and trenches littered with dead bodies, I could truly visualize the horrors soldiers constantly encountered. By the way, the death toll was so high that farmers still encountered dead bodies uh, when they're plowing their fields and, and many of the trenches have been preserved just to let you see what it looks like. So let's take a look at the trailer and I'll give you my comments as we go along. World War I, or the Great War as it was called, lasted from 28 July 1914 to 11 November 1918. During that time, an estimated 2 million German soldiers died in combat. Of that, 465,000 German soldiers were killed on the Western Front alone. The Western Front was approximately 475 miles long and ran from the English Channel to the Swiss Alps. Mister. War is oftentimes an unfortunate necessity. With many wars, there are those who are not only zealots for war, but also glorify it, as Headmaster Kantorek did here. My opinion is that kind of attitude makes them fools. Youth, such as with the four young German friends in the story, are naturally the recipients of military recruitment and unfortunately are the first to realize that war is horrific and a sad experience. The movie depicts German soldiers experiencing extreme fatigue, mental trauma, and hunger. One thing that's not covered in the movie is the disease, and the, in particular the Spanish flu, which killed millions right at the end of the war, and, uh, and hundreds of thousands of uh, troops were affected as well. Wieder mehr als 40.000 Tote allein in den letzten Wochen. Es ist vorbei. Tank, air, and chemical warfare was first introduced to the battlefield during World War I. And this technology set the stage for all future wars. Im Namen der Menschlichkeit, ich bitte Sie um den Waffenstillstand. Vous avez 72 heures pour accepter nos conditions. Ich werde nicht kapitulieren. In the final days of the war, German leadership realized with the large influx of American troops, uh, the stiff resistance of the French and British allies, uh, the loss of the uh, Eastern Front with the communists taking over in Russia, that they had to sue for peace. The armistice was signed on a train car in France and the war ended on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Also, as you historians know, that this armistice contributed greatly to World War II. But that's for another time. Meine 
Mutter wollte nicht, dass ich in Krieg ziehe. Ich wollte ihnen zeigen, dass ich das kann. Ach, Paul. Ja, wenn wir nach Hause kommen. Ich vermisse meine Kameraden weg! The French produced more than 3,000 tanks, more than any other. Uh, the Allies had, uh, with the British and the uh, Americans, had thousands of tanks, but the Germans only had 18, which really put them at a serious disadvantage on the battlefield. The French had two main battle tanks, the Renault FT-17 light tanks, which was not only impregnable to rifle and machine guns, but had uh, rotating turrets, a 37 millimeter cannon or Hotchkiss machine gun. However, I believe the tanks in the movie appear to be the saint uh heavy tanks, which had a 75 millimeter howitzer cannon and four eight millimeter machine guns and was unbelievably deadly against the Germans. Schließen wir Frieden. <laughs> Du musst jetzt tapfer sein. Für die, die es nicht geschafft haben. Für uns alle. In these scenes you see both the brutality of war and the human frailty when killing your, your fellow man, even if it is your enemy. The movie's story also depicts the friendship of the four young men with a seasoned older soldier, uh, Katzinski or Kat, who mentors and takes care of them all through the, the movie and the book. Also, it shows the generals who took Dylan Thomas's poem, Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night, literally. I'll let you guys figure that one out after you've seen the movie. For those of you who haven't read the novel or seen the movie, I've intentionally left out a lot of details. However, the movie does follow the novel pretty closely and it does show the relationships, the extreme violence of war, and the political side of the war. However, the movie doesn't mention Paul Bomber's detachment from civilian life when he goes home on leave. This is what many soldiers experience when coming home and I, I definitely recommend you watch the movie, which is in English, by the way, and read the book. On one final note, it took over a century to have a World War I national monument in Washington, D.C., which I thought was pretty sad. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Share it with your friends to help grow the channel. Uh, if you have any comments, please leave them in the comments section below. And until next time, always make sure your takeoff and landing is equal.